In this video, you are going to learn about the important discoveries related to photosynthesis. The first discovery related to photosynthesis happened a long time ago in the year 1774. Joseph Presley, through his bell jar experiment, demonstrated that when a burning candle and a live mice was placed inside a closed chamber made up of glass, the candle extinguished and the mice died after some time. But when he placed a potted mint plant in the same setup along with the mice and burning candle, he noticed that the candle kept burning and the mice didn't die. From this set of experiment, he was able to conclude that the burning candle which is showing combustion and the mice which is performing respiration release bad air in the closed chamber due to which the mice died and the candle extinguished. But when a plant was placed in the same setup, it consumed the foul air and converted it into good air due to his work Presley is credited with the discovery of oxygen. In the year 1779, Jan Ingenhouse was able to demonstrate that plants can release the good air or oxygen only in presence of light. He used an aquatic plant hydrilla for this experiment and observed the formation of bubbles of oxygen during daytime. But during nighttime, no such bubbles were produced. This experiment made it clear that sunlight is essential for photosynthesis. In 1854, Julius von Sachs proved that product of photosynthesis is glucose and it is stored in the form of starch in the green parts of the plant now known as chloroplast. In 1888, Engelmann, using a prism, a green filamentous algae cladophora and some aerobic bacteria, gave the action spectrum of photosynthesis. A beam of visible light was allowed to pass through a prism to split it into its spectrum. When this visible spectrum was allowed to fall on the filamentous algae cladophora, he observed that aerobic bacteria moved towards the cladophora by showing aerotactic movement. But accumulation of these bacteria occurred only in the regions of red and blue wavelength and thus he concluded that photosynthesis occurs mainly in the red and blue wavelength of the visible spectrum. In 1905, Blackman concluded that photosynthesis is not a single step reaction but can be divided into two phases. One is called photochemical reaction or the light reaction and the other is dark reaction. Both the reaction occurs during the daytime but the light reaction is directly dependent on light while the dark reactions indirectly dependent on light. The site of light reaction is the grana and the stroma lamellae of chloroplast but the dark reaction occurs in the stroma of the chloroplast. The product of light reactions are ATP, NADPH and molecular oxygen and these products are used in the dark reaction to synthesize glucose. In 1920, Otto Warburg performed the intermittent light experiment on chlorella. He observed when chlorella is provided with continuous light, the amount of carbon dioxide reduced is less as compared to when the same algae is provided intermittent light. That is alternate light and dark periods. This resulted in more yield in the latter case. He proposed two explanations for the improvement in yield of the intermittent light. Either the reduction of CO2 continues in the dark or it proceeds twice as fast during the brief light flash as during the same length of time in continuous light. In 1932, Emerson and Arnold proved the existence of two distinct photochemical processes in the light reaction of photosynthesis. One in which the flow of electrons follows a non-cyclic pathway and these electrons are ultimately accepted by an electron acceptor NADP which gets reduced into NADPH. In the second type, the flow of electrons occurs in such a way that the electron returns from where it is released thus forming a cyclic pathway. In 1939, Robin Hill isolated chloroplasts from plant cells and placed them in CO2 deficient setup along with electron acceptors. 
When these chloroplasts were illuminated with light, the photolysis of water occurred and resulted in production of molecular oxygen. He also noted that the electron acceptors got reduced. In the year 1941, two scientists, Ruben and Kamen, gave the experimental proof that oxygen released during photosynthesis comes from photolysis of water and not from carbon dioxide. They used heavy isotope of oxygen, O18, to trace the products. When CO2 containing heavy isotope of oxygen was used, along with water having normal isotope of oxygen, it was observed that heavy isotope was present in glucose and water, but not in the oxygen gas released. But when CO2 having normal isotope of oxygen and water having heavy isotope of oxygen was used, the heavy oxygen was present in gaseous form but not in glucose and water. In 1954, Melvin Calvin was able to trace all the intermediates involved in the dark reaction of photosynthesis and arrange them in the form of a cyclic pathway called C3 cycle or Calvin cycle. He used radioactive isotope of carbon C14 and radio tracer technique for his experiment. The organism used were green algae chlorella and St. Desmus. For this discovery, he was awarded Nobel Prize in the year 1961. In 1960, Hill and Bendal proposed the Z scheme. The Z scheme is the arrangement of electron carriers involved in the non-cyclic photophosphorylation on the basis of their redox potential. The release of electrons from photosystem 2 due to photo excitation is from high redox potential to low redox potential that is uphill. The flow of electrons through electron carriers to reach photosystem 1 is downhill. Photo excitation of electrons from PS1 is again uphill and its flow through electron carriers to finally reach the terminal electron acceptor NADP is again downhill. In 1961, Peter Michel proposed the chemiosmotic hypothesis, which explains the ATP formation in both mitochondria and chloroplast during oxidative phosphorylation and photophosphorylation respectively. In both the cases, ATP formation requires presence of a proton gradient which is created with the help of a membrane and proton pump and the enzyme ATP synthase is used for the formation of ATP. Peter Michel was also awarded Nobel Prize in the year 1978. So that is all for this video. If you have made this far, I would like to thank you for watching through this video. No matter how you support this channel, whether through likes, comments, subscription or watch time, it makes a big impact on what I can do here in the channel. So thank you so much for your support.